All right, everyone. So this is going to be my first leak code video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a daily challenge every day. And this is my first time seeing the question. So I can kind of like evaluate myself and my problem solving. So that's pretty much what this video is going to be. I'm going to try to make one every day to stay consistent. But anyways, let's get started. So this problem is called maximum twin sum of a linked list. So let's look through it. And a linked list of size n where n is even, okay, so we get an even amount of nodes. Each index of the linked list is known as the twin of n minus i minus, okay, n minus 1 minus i. So pretty much if we look at the ith node in this example, let me get my pen out. If we look at this node in example 1, that is the 0th index, and n is going to be four because one two three four nodes so four minus one three minus zero <clears throat> okay so it's going to be the twin of this node that's what it looks like all right yep so for example if n equals four then node zero is the twin of node three node zero is the node of twin three okay that's pretty much what we concluded and node one is the twin of node two okay makes sense these are the only nodes with twins for n equals four okay so the example shows yep so these two are twins all right so pretty much it seems like if it's the zeroth index it's gonna be twins with the last index and if we look at the next index it's gonna be with the second to last index that's what i'm getting from this we i can check that later but anyways the twin sum is defined as the sum of a node and its twin so given the head of a linked list with even length return the maximum twin sum of the linked list so let's read through example one um, let me clear that real quick so we're giving our head, that's fine. Output's gonna be six because what? Four plus two equals six, right? Yeah, so zero and one are the twins of nodes three and two. So <clears throat> respectfully, all have twin sum equal to six. Yep, so basically it's saying five plus one is equal to six because these two are twins and four plus two is equal to six. Um, since they're equal, it doesn't really matter. But when we look at the second example, we see that four and three are twins and two and two are twins. So this is going to equate to seven because you're just adding these up. And this equals to four. <clears throat> so our answer is going to be seven. Now, if we look at this, we just add these two. There's only two nodes. So in the constraints, we see that the number of nodes in the list is even, as we already know. And we don't have to worry about zero, so we don't have to have an edge case for that. Node value doesn't matter too much, so let's plan this out. So pretty much this formula is going to be quite important. And we do need to, I believe this can be solved in O of N. Yeah, linked list, most linked list problems can be solved in O of N. So, hmm, okay. One idea I have for this question is to create a hash map. So if we iterate through the linked list one time, let me draw out my map real quick. I uh, have my key here, my value here. So let's look at example one, right? Our key is going to be the index value. So if we have zero as our key, our value is going to be five. And as you can see, we can go through the list. So if we're looking at the first index, that matches with four. Second index matches with two. And third index matches with one. So once we have this in the hash map, we only have to iterate through, well, we can go through the key, find out what the key is. So 
if the key is zero, we plug it into this formula that they gave us, n minus one minus i, boom. So when we iterate through a hash map, it's not necessarily gonna be in this order, but we don't really care about that. So, mm -mm. but I'm trying to look at this edge case. So if we plug in three, three, so it would be n, which is four minus one, three minus three, yep. So it doesn't matter if we start at, so zero and with three are twins, right? So even if we plug in zero, it's still gonna be, it's gonna show to three and then three is gonna show to zero. So I don't have to worry about iterating through like only half of the hash map. I can just go through the full one. It's still an O of n time complexity. So we should be fine there. So we do our map, we plug in, we iterate through the list one time just to get the values into the map. And then we can iterate through the map and we can keep track of our results. So this is how we keep track of our results. So let's just say, just for example's sake that we're iterating through in the proper order. So we look at zero, we plug zero into the formula and we get three, right? So then we can add in five and one. So our result is six for now. Now we look at one, one's gonna give us two as its twin. So we can add four and two. And what's gonna happen is that this six is gonna be compared with this six and we're gonna find the maximum value and it's gonna be replaced. So let's just say that instead of two, this turned out to be, mm, let's make it eight. So in this case, if we look at one and two, that's gonna add to 12. And 12 is bigger than six, so the result changes to six in memory, and bam. So once we iterate through all of it, we should get the highest result. So let me clear this and we can start coding it. So the first thing we're gonna need is a map. I'll just call it dictionary. There we go, D. So now what I wanna do is I wanna have a current node that's gonna to point to the head. So what's happening now is I have a pointer that's pointing to the first element of the linked list. Now we're gonna iterate through the linked list. So what we can do is while cur. So basically what this means is while the node is not at the end. So a node has, as we can see, it has a value and it has a next. And the next at the end of the node, so let me, let's go back to this example here, the next is gonna be null. So if our pointer points to nothing, which is here, this loop is not gonna execute. So that's what we're doing. So while cur, and we also need a res of, um, an index count. Forgot about that. So here's how we're gonna do it. While current is pointing to a node, while it's valid, we'll make our map, the key is gonna be the index count, and then it's gonna to equal to cur.val. And then we need to increment the index count. Lovely, so this should iterate through the list and it should populate our map. And I'm also gonna have a result here. I'll just default it to negative one. All right, so what this code does, I'll comment it out just for, um, populate the map. Now, once we're done with that, we can iterate through map to find the results. So let's just call our variable, we'll just do for key in D. So this is gonna iterate through the map at any index, it doesn't really matter. So what we can do now is we wanna access its twin, right? So we can actually do this in one line. We can say result is equal to the max of results. And then the second argument here is gonna be what's compared with results. So if the second argument is larger than result, result gets replaced. So what we can do is we use our formula. So we wanna find the value of the key we're at right now. And we also wanna add, let's go back to, let me get my pen out, this formula right here. N minus one minus I. So let's do that. And as you can see, um, good for us, the index count is actually gonna turn into the length of the nodes because 
it starts at zero. Let me get my pen out again. When we have the index count at zero, it's at the first node. Bam, it's going to be zero. Then it's going to be one. Then it's going to be two. Then it's going to be three. And then you see how it increments again at the end? It's going to be four. So our index count is going to keep track of the amount of nodes in. So we can just say index count, which is n, and then minus 1 minus the key. And once we do that, our result should have the answer. So we can just return results. <clears throat> So now we can check for edge cases, I guess, but it seems like a pretty solid algorithm. So let's try it out. Let's make, let's pretend like this is our example. Let's do four and I wanna make my own cases. So let's do one, two, three, four. All right, so first thing we're doing is we're creating our map. Current is equal to head. So let's say C is over here. Index count is zero, result minus one. Iterating through while current, we're gonna make the map one, one, and then index count increments. Then the map's gonna be, or no, the map will be zero, right? Zero, one, and then the map will be one, two, then the map will be two, three, and then finally, three, four, and then index count increments again to four, which is our n. Bam. So once it does that, we iterate through the key. This code looks all right to me. I do not see any problems. I don't think this can be negative at all. Yep, it's impossible for this argument here to be negative. So let me clear the screen. I think I should be good to go with this result. We can run it. I might have a syntax error, hopefully not. Let's see. Oh, I forgot something. Most important thing. Um, I forgot to move the pointer. There we go. Current equals current dot next. Super important. Now let's try it. Wonderful. So we passed the three cases. Let me try submitting this. Hopefully we get this problem done. I like to solve medium problems in less than 25 minutes. I don't know how long I was talking, but I hope it's less than 25 minutes. So let's see. Submit. Let's see if we're missing an edge case or something. Nope. We got it right. Wonderful. So this is my first time doing this. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll make one more tomorrow, but see ya.